A few days ago, as a joke, I tweet about moving my Java from a Coachbase mug to a MongoDB mug. And I took some time to develop a, a tool that allow you to migrate your data from Coachbase to Mongo. And I call that the MongoDB uh, Coachbase Data Replicator. It's a Java application that you can easily install. So download the jar file, configure a property file, and uh, run it. So let's look at it now. So I have downloaded and uh, the jar file. You can edit the configurations to say which um, which database or which cluster of MongoDB you want to use. You can use multiple servers and so on. Uh, where do you want to run this specific uh, server? Because it's a proxy that use uh, the cross data center replication from Coachbase to take the data out and put them inside MongoDB. Do you want to uh, do only insert or insert and update? Um, if you don't have a type or a field that describes the type that allows uh, uh, Coach this uh, specific server to know where to put in which collections, because you don't have collection in Coachbase, it will put all the data in the specific collection you have configured or create a collection for each type. So let's just start the server. So it's starting on this specific port. So now what I what I have to do is I just have to go to Coachbase. And go and we have data. You see we have the beer sample data that are available here. I go to the cross data center replication saying, okay, I want to, to create a target, MongoDB, and it will be on the port that I specified. So one second. The password we have in the file. Done. So now I just create a specific replication from my current database into, for example, for this bucket, uh, this bucket into a beer database so you have in MongoDB. Oh, this beer database does not exist, yes, because Coachbase look at a different namespace. So let's create this database. Mongo use beers DB get beer star. just to create a namespace for the DB. So you see the database exists now. So let's start the replication. So now it's replicating. At least it's starting. And if you look now in the log file, I have many information saying I have documents, replicating documents, and so on. If I do a show collections, I see beers and breweries. Because what happened is based on the way it's configured, it will take the fields that you have here, for example, the tilt type here, and use that to select a specific collection. So look if we have this document in the brewery collection. db.brewery.find1 ID So you see we have the document and look at, the, for example, the phone number. I will change the phone number here. Save. And because in my configuration file I accept um, also the updates, if I do the query again, you see 999 has been pushed. So we have everything on what, um, if I want to see if I have all the documents that has been published. Go back to here, we have more than 7,000 documents, so if I do And count. count. You see, we have exactly the same number of documents. So you can do many things. One of the big difference between uh, these two databases is now I can, if I want, without creating anything else, I want to count db.count, db.beer.count. What do I want to count? I want to count. Uh, 
three years at time, an ABV equal to, uh, I don't know anything about beer, so let's look at one beer. An ABV of five. So I have 261. So something that if I want to do that inside CoachBase, I have to create a view and so on. But here it's just one part of uh, the migration, so you see the data has been uh, moved from MongoDB, uh, from CoachBase into MongoDB, and I also uh, took some time to uh, move uh, one uh, application that is an example of uh, the usage, how to develop with the CoachBase. So I took exactly the same application, just update a few lines of code to use um, this on MongoDB, so let's start the application. So what I have changed in the code, I just change the connections to say I want to connect to uh, the default database here, uh, to the default server uh, on the beer database, and then I change the code every time I need to do a specific query, so DB connection find and so on, saved and so on. Now if I go to my application, you will see show the beers, if I want to update the beer, so what was the beer that I used in my query? It was a brewery, so let's just for example take uh, Anakin, uh, so this is ID of the Anakin, so you see it's 5, I can uh, change Anakin database, the Anakin beer to put 5.1 and if I do uh, db dot beer find here just to show you that it's effectively based on uh, you see that uh, it's 5.1 as I saved here and based on this specific configuration now, it's if I want to uh, change the data here, and we ha you have to be careful in the way it's configured, uh, if I do a search about this specific document inside here, and I change to uh, 6, you will override the, data, override the data inside MongoDB, you see, 6. If I go in my application, it's 6. So this is why um, in the data replicator you can choose to just say I want to insert only the data. Insert only. So like that when it saves the data, you uh, execute the server in insert only mode. If I change the data now in um, MongoDB back to uh, .9 for example, I save, it's .9, for .9, for .9. If I go in here and I change it to 8 and save, this data won't be replicated into MongoDB. Only the new database, or only the new data will be uh, sent to, um, to Mongo. So this is a small example of how you can uh, migrate data from CoachBase to MongoDB and how you can also uh, quickly migrate your application and to take advantage of all the MongoDB features.